Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're going to get started on panel five. Um, lessons from scalable approaches. Um, OK, I, uh, I'm Mae Berenbaum um, from the Department of Entomology, University of Illinois. Uh, I'm going to go a little off script here, going rogue. Um, among other things, I have an interest in, in science communication, but I'm representing in one way the National, Academies of, National Academy of Sciences. For more than 20 years, NAS has been a champion of and innovator in public engagement among scientific societies. There's been a veritable alphabet soup of activities starting uh, in 1996, at least for me, in this building um, uh, with an opus, uh, the Office for Public Understanding of Science, which published the Beyond Discovery series for the public, explaining the paths by which basic science finds useful applications, and also organized a competition for conveying scientific knowledge in popular media, including movies, television, radio, video games, and the internet. Right here in the Beckman, so happy 31st anniversary. In 2003, the NACFI, NAC the uh, National Academy Keck Futures Initiatives established the National Academy's Communications Award for Public Understanding of Science through books, newspapers, radio, television, and since 2008, online. Uh, in 2010, uh, the National Academy created a partnership with the ent entertainment industry to create the Science and Entertainment Exchange, SCE, quote, to cr create a synergy between accurate science and engaging storytelling. 2012, the National Academy with the National Research Council convened PILS, the Public Interfaces Life Sciences Roundtable for Life Sciences to understand the dynamics of public interfaces and access to the knowledge and tools needed to develop proactive collaborative science-based approaches to public interfaces about emerging life science topics. Uh, national, uh, and of course, 2012, the Sackler Colloquium series was launched to, quote, foster an institutional commitment to evidence-based communication science, which was an active effort which continues today to establish best practices in SciComm. So NAS has been out on front for a very long time, so thank you for the support, uh, and thank you for all the participation over the years. Can we have a round for the National Academy? Okay, now as a scientist, uh, based on uh, certain comments over the last two years, I will begin by quoting some boring numbers. <laughs> um, in 2017, I, I am, by the way, the new editor of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, the sort of member journal, but one of the premier journals in all of science. PNAS in 2017 handled more than 18,000 submissions, published more than 3,200 articles in 25,200 pages, 13,800 of which were in print, 11,400 of which online. In terms of readership, in 2017, the website received 12.7 million hits with 26 million PDF downloads. In 1915, when the first issue came out, there were 17 papers in 58 pages. The numbers we have today would be unimaginable not to mention indecipherable to, uh, to that community. Uh, what's a PDF? Um, but in just over half a century, the science and engineering landscape has changed. Uh, the proportion of the workforce has almost quadrupled in the last half century, from 1.3% uh, in 1960 to 4.9% in 2016. There's more scientists, more information, more people looking for information. One thing we don't know, and I confirmed this with conversation with Dietrich Schreufel, is how many science communication scholars there are. Even the scholars themselves don't know. But it's a small number. So what we have is a fire hose of information, scientific information, a hungry public, and it's not clear where the next generation of firefighters will be coming from. So why shouldn't we talk about scalability? Um, who can be mobilized? How can we more scientific information reach more people? Scalability is um, an issue. And this, to illustrate, 45 or 44 minutes into this whole two-day session, a question was asked about scalability. It's on people's mind. And uh, we know it's partly about the messages, partly about the messengers. We have on our panel four messengers with four uh, messages. And I'll uh, introduce them briefly. They'll come up in order. Um, and uh, just first to say, uh, we have uh, Philip Shermer, who, Phil Shermer is the Project Healthy Minds, an initiative, uh, purpose of which is to measurably move opinion on mental health issues. Uh, he is also, uh, uh, he was also involved in the Obama White House economic policy as an advisor and is the founder of the first and largest music uh, uh, nonprofit 
social impact music festival called Music Matters. Our second speaker is uh, uh, Rick Weiss uh, from Cyline AAAS. He's the director of, of th this effort called Cyline, a philanthropically funded free service at AAAS that helps journalists cover science, health, and the environment with the goal of injecting more credible evidence-based research findings into their news st stories up front. Fact checking comes in too late. He has more than three decades of experience in science journalism and public affairs, including uh, uh, many years at the Washington Post. Uh, and I, I know this personally because it was more than 30 years ago when he first interviewed me. So you now know how old we both are. Chris, Kirsten Ellenbogen from, is from the Great Lakes Science Center. She's the president and chief executive officer of the Great Lakes Science Center in Cleveland. She's been involved with informal science education throughout her career as a principal investigator of the Center for Advancement of Informal Science Education through her work at five different museums by studying how experiences in these settings can be used to engage the public in exploring scientific data. Uh, she is also uh, on the board of advisors uh, for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. And finally, we have uh, uh, Sikhan Akpan from PBS NewsHour. Uh, Sikhan is a, the digital science producer for PBS NewsHour and co-creator of the award-winning NewsHour digital series, Science Scope. He's a science writer for many prominent science and popular media outlets, has a background in neuroscience and in pathobiology. Uh, and with that, uh, let's just proceed to the talks with the, the first uh, talk. You'll see the, I hope, title slide or not. There we go. Um, the kids are not all right. Uh, and uh, Phil Schirmer. Thank you. Thank you.